Hello everyone, I'm Manu Parmi and I'm an Applications Engineer at Plexim. I'd like to welcome you to this hands-on tutorial video on getting started with Plex. Plex is a unique tool for the fast simulation of powered electronic circuits. There are two versions of Plex. Plex Standalone, which is an independent simulation platform, and Plex Blockset, which works within the simulating environment. In this video, we will build a simple model in Plex block set. The circuit we are going to model is a simple buck converter, first with an open loop controller, and then we will close the loop with a hysteresis type controller. To access Plex, you simply need to enter plexlib in the MATLAB command line. This will bring up a simulink model that contains a generic Plex block named circuit and various component libraries. In the libraries, you will find electrical components from which you can create your own circuits. Alternatively, you may access the Plex toolbox by opening it in the Simulink library browser. To enter the circuit in Plex, we must first open a new Simulink model. We then drag and drop the yellow Plex circuit block from the Plex library directly into the white Simulink model window. In many ways, a Plex circuit block behaves just like a regular Simulink subsystem and is treated natively by the Simulink solvers. A double click on the Plex block will open an empty yellow schematic window with the menu bar quite like that of a Simulink window. The components required for the electrical circuit must be copied into this window from the Plex component libraries. Simulink components cannot be placed inside the Plex schematic window, and components from the Plex library cannot be placed at the Simulink level, with the exception of the scope, XY plot, and probe, which are all not only in the Plex component library, but a second version of each is also provided specifically for use with Simulink. The electrical components that we need for the buck converter can be found under the Plex electrical library in the sub-libraries called sources, meters, passive components, and power semiconductors. Components can be placed in the model window by dragging and dropping from the library. We start with the electrical part of the buck converter, first by placing a DC voltage source at the input. Then we place the passive components. If we want to change the orientation of a component, we can do it from the format menu, which has options for rotating, inverting, and flipping. The same commands can be done using keyboard shortcuts, such as Ctrl R to rotate. Each component in Plex has a set of customizable parameters. A double click on the component icon opens a dialog box in which you can set these parameters. If you want a parameter to be displayed in the schematic, check the checkbox on the right side of the edit field. Like Simulink, values in Plex must be entered as the decimal value directly or by using exponential or scientific E notation. Prefixes such as M for milli or U for micro are not valid as these can otherwise be used for custom variable names. Once a parameter value is displayed on the schematic, you can directly edit it. As I just mentioned, in addition to providing values or vectors of values to a component parameter, we can also provide a variable name. Let's assign a variable name to the input voltage and revisit this topic shortly. We want to monitor the source current and the load voltage which require an ammeter and a voltmeter respectively. Notice that each component has either black circles to represent electrical terminals or green arrowheads to represent control signal terminals. If we bring the mouse pointer close to such a terminal, the pointer shape changes from an arrow to a cross. We can now drag a connection to another component by holding the left mouse button down. When we approach another terminal of the same connection type, the pointer shape changes into a double cross. 
As soon as we release the mouse button, a new connection will be created. You can also simply click on the first component and while holding down the Alt key on the keyboard, click on the second component to create such a connection automatically. A common error is to bring two wires close to one another but not fully join them. So be sure that a connection is made. In addition to creating wires by connecting component ports, we can create a branch from an existing connection using the right mouse button and dragging. These black lines now represent electrical connections and can be thought of as wires carrying currents. Notice that the meters have green terminals, which will allow them to join to signal connections. Electrical connections cannot be fed into a scope directly. You must always use a volt or an ammeter to convert the electrical quantities into a signal first. Or you can simply use a Plex Pro block either in Plex or in Simulink. To associate a component with the Plex Pro block in Plex, drag the Plex component of interest onto it in the schematic and release your mouse once an arrow appears. You can also drag the component of interest into the probe editor window. To associate a component with the Plex Pro block in Simulink, drag the Plex component of interest into the probe editor window. Next, we need to model the transistor and the diode. The transistor can be modeled using a controllable switch or an ideal IGBT or MOSFET component bearing in mind that it may conduct current in only one direction. We will use a MOSFET component for the transistor. We also need a freewheeling diode. The diode is a switch that closes as the voltage across it becomes positive and opens as the current through it becomes negative. These components can be found in the Power Semiconductors sublibrary. All components in this sublibrary are based on ideal switches that have zero on resistance and infinite off resistance. They open and close instantaneously. While I add the MOSFET, I will demonstrate that you can connect a component into an existing connection simply by dropping it on a wire. Now the use of ideal switches in modeling offers three major advantages. Ease of use, numerical robustness, and fast simulation speed. In some components, like the diode, you may add a forward voltage or a non-zero on resistance. If you're unsure about these values, you should leave them at zero. By the way, although each power semiconductor switch is modeled as ideal, Plex users can still model losses and estimate temperatures using the Plex thermal domain. This is a topic covered in a separate tutorial video. This completes the electrical circuit. To hide a component's name on the schematic, right click on the component, then from the format menu, uncheck show name or use the appropriate keyboard shortcut. It's time to provide a control input to the switch. We will start off with a simple open loop controller. We can either use the Plex control domain library to build this controller in Plex or build the controller at the Simulink level. Until now, our electrical circuit lacks a connection with the Simulink environment. You will notice this from the fact that the Plex circuit block in Simulink does not have any inputs or outputs. Signals in Plex are used to bridge the gap to Simulink. These signals provide unidirectional information interchange between Plex components and Simulink components. To add inputs and outputs, we use the signal import and output blocks from the Plex system library. Notice that as soon as we add ports into the Plex schematic, the Plex circuit block in Simulink now has input and output terminals. We can duplicate a component using copy and paste from the edit menu or the standard keyboard shortcuts or by holding the control key and dragging from an existing component. Optionally, you can rename the signal ports. 
we will use a pulse generator block to generate PWM signals at a specified period and duty cycle. Connect the output of this block to the gate terminal which is connected to the switch. Now we will use a plex scope at the simulink level to monitor the results. Notice that the scope block has only one plot by default. You can choose to insert more plots to the existing scope window. Or we can use a multiplexer block which will allow us to combine multiple waveforms into the same scope plot. The output of the multiplexer now has one connection that has a width of 2. The source current waveform will be overlaid with the load voltage waveform. Now let's return to our input voltage value. From the Simulink file menu, we can access the model properties window. In the callbacks tab, we can specify parameter initializations like the input voltage. Finally, we can choose the settings for the numerical solver. Plex block set uses Simulink solvers directly. From the Simulink simulation menu or from the Plex simulation menu, we can access solver settings window. In this case, we will leave the default settings for the variable step automatic solver and just change the simulation stop time to one tenth of a second. A simulation can be started either from the simulation menu or the keyboard shortcut Ctrl T. The Plex scope will then allow you to view the resulting waveforms and analyze and manipulate the data graphically. Advanced zooming and panning features, as well as data cursors, allow you to obtain the data you need directly within the scope. For example, we can see the switched nature of the waveforms and related characteristics such as the voltage ripple. A separate tutorial video details the features of the Plex scope. As I mentioned earlier, the same controller can be built at the Plex level instead of the Simulink level. I pre-built this model here with the controller in Plex. The results are identical to that of the controller at the Simulink level. Next, we will replace the open loop controller with the hysteresis type controller. Once again, we can build this controller either at the Plex level or at the Simulink level. Let's build the controller at the Plex level this time. To separate the electrical part from the control part, let's put it in a subsystem. Creating a subsystem has no effect on the simulation result but makes the whole system more structured. You will notice that a new terminal appears in the subsystem icon for each port that you drag into the subsystem schematic. To move these terminals along the icon's frame, drag them with the mouse while holding down the shift key. For the bug converter, we will implement a hysteresis type control that keeps the capacitor voltage roughly in a plus or minus 0.2 volt band around 6 volts. This involves using a constant block as a reference set point and feeding back the measured load voltage from Plex. An error signal is then generated as the difference of the set point and measured voltage. And this is then fed to a relay block whose output is now the gating signal to the switch. The control scheme here sets the gate signal to the switch high if the load voltage falls below 5.8 volts and the gate signal to low if the voltage increases above 6.2 volts. We are simply regulating the current flow through the inductor and therefore the charge state of the capacitor. To make things a bit more interesting, we can apply a step change in the input. We replace the constant input source with the controlled input source. A step function block allows you to schedule a value to increase or decrease in the time at which this occurs during the simulation. So we will use one to change the signal that is fed into the input at midpoint of the simulation from 12 volts to 8 volts. 
we can then observe how will the controller regulates out this disturbance to maintain the desired capacitor voltage. Let's compare this model to the controller created in Simulink. We will find that the results are identical. This buck converter model is a basic power electronics application. Plex is capable of simulating much larger systems, such as a wind turbine, connected to the power grid. Demo models are included in Plex and provide an idea of many different systems that it can be used to help design. This concludes the tutorial video on introduction to Plex block set. For more videos and other information, please visit our website at www.plexim.com. Thank you for watching.